Game Ranks presents another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some raw, uncut gameplay and some first impressions of the latest games releasing. This time around, we're talking about XCOM 2. As of right now, this game is exclusive to PC and Mac, and we're hoping it'll make it to consoles eventually. But for those of you that don't know, the XCOM series is a beloved franchise of squad-based RTS gameplay. And I'm not gonna bullshit you guys anymore, I'm not gonna waste your time. XCOM 2 is really, really good. There's a little bit something for everyone here, and even people who aren't really fans of RTS-style gameplay, and I think that's super awesome. So the setup this time around is the humans versus the advent. Basically after XCOM Enemy Unknown, the aliens took over and started a whole society and, and kind of serve as an occupying force. They've been around for about 20 years and this whole situation ties not only to the gameplay, but it's just actually a pretty interesting story. The game has a killer presentation and kicks right in with some awesome cutscenes and support characters that you're actually gonna give a shit about. Now by what I say about how the story has a kind of effect in the gameplay is that there's a, an immediately a different feel in XCOM 2. In gameplay and presentation, it just feels like you're fighting a losing battle and there's no time. It's always a rush and you're just destined to fail. There's always something to worry about. There's always an objective to complete or a side objective to complete, a timer counting down. And when you're viewing the menu in your main base, there's a doomsday clock that's constantly counting down, counting down until the advent actually destroys the human race. This gives you kind of like a, a Majora's Mask style anxiety, just giving the overall entire length of the game a timer. And it really makes you feel like the pressure's on. This different feel I mentioned ties over completely to the actual mechanics in the gameplay. Uh, this time around, there's a lot more of a guerrilla style focus. You're not always just trudging across a map from A to B, discovering enemies and shooting them. This time around, you really feel like a gorilla in terms of your objectives and just how you play the game. In terms of the objectives, there's a lot of side objectives here. Some of these side objectives and side missions are dark events. And these dark events are new modifying factors and world events that are affected by how you manage your communications throughout the world that if you don't keep on top of them, they can really screw up some of your main objectives. Sometimes you can jump into a mission and the dark event will be enemies will have stronger armor. So you're gonna have to do a side mission where you take out their armor supplies. It makes it feel really good and keeps you kind of playing for longer than you'd expect and really shakes things up every once in a while. These are like these guerrilla style tasks where you're always activating beacons like distress beacons or hijacking shipments or taking out leaders. And that is also reflected in concealment mode, which most missions you start out in concealment mode where you kind of have the upper hand. The name of the game is really ambushing in XCOM 2 and it's a lot of fun. Moving across the map, like I said, isn't just traipsing from A to B and moving your troops up and up and up. Now, sometimes you have stealth as the upper hand and, and since you're really kind of fighting a losing battle, you really need it. The game is even more customizable than XCOM Enemy Unknown, and this time around, you're gonna get to know your troops more than ever, and you're gonna have such an attachment to them, and it makes when they die an even more powerful event. The fact that these soldiers that you can name, upgrade, customize, and get to know, but when they die, it just makes it all the more powerful, and it's not a scripted event. It's completely on you because you design the character, and your commands and your strategy puts their life on the line. And so when you screw up, and when they die, which inevitably has to happen because you have to die to succeed sometimes, it really hits you hard. It's really cool. It just raises the stakes and gives you some emotion and like makes you really enjoy playing this game and this to me is why I really enjoy XCOM 2 because it stands out from standard uh, you know RTS fare where you're just moving around a bunch of boring troops this shit is really compelling not to mention the fact that the game looks really great and some of the camera angles put you right in the action it's completely tangible and you're right there you get to see the new looks of all the soldier classes and enemies which are absolutely gorgeous I must say and these classes are really important because now this time around they have even more variety than ever before each class has a lot of wiggle room like you can have like a long-range sniper character that can also be good at melee and there's a lot of different ways you can move around a traditional style character I also think this helps with just the general idea that this is much better than XCOM Enemy Unknown and the fact that like I lost interest towards the end of the game. And while XCOM 2 is sometimes almost borderline unfairly difficult, it never gets boring. The level design and mission design and everything is completely varied. Plus like I said with the story, the vibe, the setup, the new character classes and the new enemy types, especially the faceless and the viper snake ladies, they're really cool and they really shake things up. Be, be sure to look out for the faceless because they can wreck you. But like I said, really the beauty in XCOM 2 is just the fact that it's the the art of failing upwards. You have to work hard, you have to upgrade your base, you have to develop these technologies, you have to invest in your soldiers, only to unfortunately probably lose a good many of them. It's how you handle it and how you move forward and how you work with the cards you're dealt that makes this game really special. And honestly, I love it. There's a lot to digest here and I can't go into everything, but I wanted to give you guys some impressions and some things to expect if you're thinking about checking out XCOM 2.
So most importantly, you guys, I want to know what you think about XCOM 2 if you've been playing it. If you haven't, are you thinking about it? Did I help you out? Did I steer you one way or the other? And if you're a console player watching this video, are you into this? Are you hoping this comes to consoles? Because I sure am, because I just could use another excuse to play it over again. If you have any more questions about XCOM 2, you can follow me on Twitter at Jake Baldino or Facebook or wherever. Well, let's talk. But you guys know the drill by now. If you like these before you buy videos, clicking the like button helps us out and it lets us do a ton more. It's going to be a busy month. And if you're new, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished.